what a good dude, man. Uh, you hang out yeah. with some really cool people, and yes. I really like him. All right, let's bring my young brother on here real quick. Uh, Sachin, uh, Sachin Seal. He is uh, here, the co-founder of Tridocious. There he is, the ancient one, talking about wisdom. What's going on? I'm well. Monday morning. This is like the best way to start off my week. I mean, David Melser, Brian Bogut, two legends on one call. Let's do this. Let's do this, <laughs> man. Well, give us a little background of the basics of living, and you know, share some of the wisdom that goes far beyond the obvious uh, age that you hold. Uh, you are an old soul. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Understanding the Ayurveda-based methodology of living a great life and tridocious principles that you've created. Uh, with your company uh, and give us a little bit of background and then Brian and I are here to help you. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to a question from you. Yeah, so just ex to explain the basics of living. So pretty much Ayurveda is a 5,000 year old life science from the Indus Valley civilization. And it's all about three greater elements, air, fire, water. Um, the air controls your thoughts and ideas. Fire controls your actions for your transformation and water controls your grounding and your reflection pretty much. So it's about keeping those three elements in balance and living a healthier, happier, and more balanced life and pretty much taking your game to the next level and being more happy, which David, I know is your mission as well. So that's pretty much, and we call it the basics because it's pretty simple, but Ayurveda is way more complicated. Uh, my dad, he's actually doing a certification right now for executive coaching. So we're going to be offering that soon. And then Brian, I know you got to give my dad some advice on that because you've been in that space for a long time. Um, but David, my Have question you. for you is, I so I was going through my email and I saw your message and you said you would never share this publicly. I haven't seen the Mulligan Brothers video yet because I wanted to ask you this question first and then I'm going to watch it. But why did losing $100 million make you happy? Because in my teenage mind, I would be devastated if I lost $100 million. And then Brian, what would you say to as a coach, what would you say to someone that would come up to you and say, "Hey, you know, losing a hundred million dollars made me happy"? Yeah. Oof. So you, you, here's what's so beautiful is that I have learned because of the losses that I've had and the lessons that come from it, how valuable those losses are. And the bigger the losses, the bigger the lessons. And for me, I know now. I did not know then. I know now that today is the only reality I have, uh, that my eternity is represented by today. The relativity of the past and the relativity of the future is in the auspice of what I'm control of, my mindset of how I think about it, my heart set of how I feel about it, and the handset of what I'm gonna do about it from the lessons that I've learned. So when I look at the greatest loss, economic loss of most people on earth, losing over a hundred million dollars, I have been able to control my mindset, heart set and my handset uh, to tell you that it was one of the greatest events in my life. If not, you know, one of, if not the greatest lesson I've ever learned because at that moment I realized the power of today, the power of the daily practices, the power of the mindset, heart set and handset. And if I could have control of my, mindset, heart set, and handset with what would devastate other people. Some suicides have happened because of less, far less. Uh, if I could take that and make it into a springboard of protection and promotion, if this was going to be the catalyst of my faith, that there's something bigger than me that loves me more than my mom, then by far, why uh, losing over $100 million was the best day of my life? It's because of where I am today and the meaning that I give to it, uh, because I know that I give meaning to the relativity of time, which exists in the past and the future. And I can only do what I can do today in order to move myself or accelerate myself towards that, both in yesterday and tomorrow. I love that. And how would I, what would I say to somebody who came to me and talked about that? I think it's a lesson in detachment. I think it's a lesson in surrender. And so it actually wouldn't even surprise me because I think so often we attach to things outside of ourselves in a way that sometimes can cause us to lose who we are. If you listen to Meltzer talk and you've listened to that story, 
he's humble enough at this point to understand that one of the greatest lessons that he can extract from this is the fact that what's really important, his basic fundamental needs, the people that he's connected to, the things and how he's going to move himself forward is really what he learned in a lot of these pieces is that the better he's able to center himself in this, now he can be an amplification to not only attract $100 million, but more in this next period of his life. And so what he really did through this process and understanding is he learned how to detach from that external piece. And so I think it's one of the most powerful lessons that each one of us can, can attain. The reality of it is detachment is about getting it right, not being right. It's not about ego, it's about impact, right? And so the beautiful part about it is so often we are protected and promoted by the universe. And I learned those words from Meltzer myself because often I've believed I've been tested. And so losing $100 million can be viewed as a test or it can be viewed as a protection and promotion, meaning that he is someone who has the skill set, the ability, the in intellect to also be able to magnify $100 million through the world. But for him, when it's bigger than him, when it's about impact, when every single thing he does is also putting a tithing back into the world, right? To have an office hours launch to promote the publicity of what we're doing to create impact in the world. And they raise over $200,000 in one night. That's detachment. That's lack of ego. That's about impact. And so I'm a big believer that loss and failure are some of our greatest teachers. And so what I would say is if that's how they found happiness, I'd celebrate them and I'd ask them, what were the primary lessons? Well, he just dropped that on you, brother. Yeah, I remember going to the two minute drill launch party. That was like the best day of my life. It was oh. super fun. I remember that. Yeah. I, well, I, I appreciate that. And you are always invited to every launch party that we have. And I know you went way out of your way uh and you will have pain mistakes failures and setbacks in your life and i hope that brian's story and my story help you to see the relativity of your future even when the reality of today seems very challenging and painful uh that you turn that into a new trajectory for yourself with greater acceleration for what you have learned and what you can learn uh, so everyone out there, remember, your reality is today. Your relativity is yesterday and tomorrow, and you can control all three. The relativity by your mindset, heart set, and the reality by your handset, which are contributing to the meaning of the past and the future. Thank you so much. We will look forward to our next launch partner, Sitchin. Check him out. Three, the number three, doshas.com. Learn about an ancient methodology of making a lot of money helping a lot of people and having a lot of fun. Say hi to your dad for me. It's always a pleasure, man. You're getting old, you're getting big. We'll see you soon. Yeah, they're actually, my dad and my brother are trekking in India in the Himalayan mountains right now. They're gonna be like reflecting on life and dad's trying to figure out some more ways on how we can actually start generating revenue. And yeah, big things coming soon. Thank you for having me, David. Beautiful, Love you, my friend. Thanks so much. Take care. Awesome. Uh, our boy Sachin, he, that, Future is bright. When I meet the kids like oh. that in, in Tocek and T T Temi, my friend from Africa, and, you know, e even my children, I just think, man, our future is so bright with oh, yeah. uh, the, the great leaders and the wisdom that they have already at such a young age for those that are grabbing on to the acceleration. Uh, even Ben, he's a... a well, let me think about it, dude. They've got access to more people and more knowledge than we did at our age, right? And I don't oh mean God. that from a universal consciousness perspective. I mean that from a technological perspective. I mean, even when I was a kid, right? Like for them at 13, 14, 15 years old, to be able to have the ability to get on and learn from people like you, right? We didn't have that ability when I was 10, 12, 13 years old. And so that's a really incredible thing that's shortening the collective wisdom and closing that gap so that our younger generation is actually going to propel, I think, a hell of a lot faster than we did. No doubt. Well, let's bring Michelle on. This is our cleanup hitter. And uh, Michelle Seller Tucker uh i can get that name right cope uh and uh very excited